Good morning and welcome to Trinity. I'm Vicar Kari and it's a pleasure to have all of you here on this lovely Pentecost morning. Before we begin worship today, we're going to have a minute for mission from Ed Heddle about our veterans ministry. Thank you, Vicar. States Colley. Good morning, disciples in Christ. We, the members of Veterans Ministry of Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church, are here to honor the memory of those Trinity Lutheran members who were veterans and who have passed away since last Memorial Day. Arlo Anderson, Navy, 1955 to 1957, Korean War, hospital corpsman. Roger Dean, Navy, 1957 to 1961, served in engineering, USS Hancock, Naval Reserves, Lieutenant Commander. Colin Hannings, Army, served in the Army Reserve for over 30 years. Charles Huntsberger, Army, 1970 to 1972, Corporal, Vietnam era. Jim Piston, Army, 1958 to 1960, in the reserves until 1964, and Dr. Robert Weevil, Army, 1958 to 1960, served as a physician. To all, thank you for your service to our country. Quick note before we begin for our friends tuning in online, our service bulletin can be be found on our website at trinitylandsdale.com. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. God is alive, new birth is given, hope is alive. The new age is done. Joy is alive. Redemption is here. Love is alive. Death cannot harm us. We are alive. New life is within us. The church is alive. God's spirit is within us. God of life, we worship you. God of creation, we praise you. God of revelation, we learn from you. God of resurrection, we come to celebrate you. This is the day Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Our worship continues with our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and now and for Amen. Please be seated as we hear from God's Word. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled up the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pygeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are all filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet of Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, but before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life.
this morning, I would like to tell you a story from the Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he said to them and breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. At this time, I'd like to welcome many folks up who'd like to come for sermon on the steps. Hello, it's good to see you. Thank you for being part of Trinity and coming up this, mor this morning. So, do you know what Pentecost is? Um. So, Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came onto the disciples and they started telling everyone about Jesus. We also know it as the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit is kind of tricky because you can't really see her. So let me ask you another question. How do you know that it's windy? Is it something you can see or see what it does? Yeah? You can also hear it and you can feel it, right? So the Holy Spirit is kind of like that. And she came in like a great wind. The disciples could hear her as she came in. People could see when the disciples went out. And they could and they could also see what she was doing. So let's take a moment and pray together. Dear God. Thank you, Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. To, tell to tell everyone about Jesus. About Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You can go to Wiggle Time. So before moving to Philadelphia, Dwayne and I volunteered with the Tucson Samaritans. They are a humanitarian group from Tucson, Arizona that provides food and water to undocumented migrants. The Samaritans track migrant routes and leave supplies along the routes to help migrants on their journey. Water, food, even blankets. There are a lot of legal technicalities that allowed us to do this, but I think the Samaritan slogan sums it up best. 
Humanitarian aid is never a crime. It was a four-hour drive to Tucson, and once there, a two-hour drive to a small, unincorporated community called Erevaca. Erevaca is 11 miles north of the Mexican border and 35 miles northwest of the port of entry at Nogales. We hiked out and dropped off gallons of water, oftentimes stepping over abandoned clothing and water jugs and praying that the vultures we saw in the distance were circling an animal and not a migrant. Then we'd get back in the car and drive to the next drop spot, off-roading through beautiful yet deceptively dangerous terrain. There was also a group in the Samaritans that would plant crosses at migrant death sites. There were hundreds of sites without crosses, and the list grows by the day. We volunteered on one of these somber outings, planting a total of five crosses, yet knowing the names of only three of the migrants. While this work isn't done through a church, it is as much a mission as anything a church could offer. It's a global mission, reanimating people from all over the world as they pass through an unassuming little community. Today, we are looking at how we can be reanimated for global mission, how the gospel calls us to missional living. In both readings, we start with the disciples who are in a closed room. In both instances, they are reanimated by the Holy Spirit, reanimated to do God's work around the corner and around the globe. Jesus' greeting of peace has new meaning now that all the disciples recognize him as the Lord. It is no longer their friend putting them at ease, but God, God's self, putting them at ease. Of the promise of new possibilities, of solace in the face of persecution, there is absolutely nothing to fear. In Jesus' farewell prayer earlier in John, he told his disciples, as the Father sent me, so I send you. They were sent out to do God's work, equipped with their faith. Now, this breath of life Jesus breathed in them, similar to the breath of life God gave to Adam and Eve, is suggesting a new creation, reanimation of what it means to believe, reanimation of what it means to be a child of God. On, in this context, can also be translated as in. Jesus breathes into them, not on or at them, This is a profound intimacy here. Jesus lives not away from us, but in and through us. God is embodied in Christ, and we are Christ's love embodied in the world. This creation doesn't replace the world. Rather, it engages the world. There is now a new mission for the faithful, a global mission, one that is sustained by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't going into the disciples with the intention of staying there. No, she's here to go out into the world. The word Jesus uses for spirit literally means one who comes alongside. She is here for the journey. We are part of a global mission, doing the best we can and the most that we can, and we have the spirit alongside us. Not within us, compelling and making us act, but alongside us. She's with us, strengthening us, reanimating us, And then we have a reading from Acts, where there is a powerful wind. In verses 2 and 3, the word for wind also translates as spirit. Let there be no misunderstanding here. The Holy Spirit has come, and she has a powerful presence. Now the disciples are aware of the Holy Spirit as a powerful presence that can enable and embolden them to be witness bearers of Christ power that reanimates them. Pentecost is not the first time the disciples receive the Holy Spirit, but it is the beginning of their missionary work and therefore the birthday of the church. The church is born out of a strong burst of the Spirit, tongues of flame and speaking in tongues. There can be no mistake, something big is happening. And then we have Peter quoting from Joel about the last days. These last days aren't the end of the world. Rather, it's the time when Jesus will bring salvation to Israel and to the world, 
where Jesus will reanimate the world. It's the last days of a world without sin. The Spirit is poured out on everyone in these last days, regardless of sex, gender, ability, sexuality, or anything else that divides us. The Spirit is poured out on all of God's children, preparing all of God's children for global mission. And we will all prophesy, prophesy about the good news of Jesus. Prophecy isn't fortune-telling. No, prophecy is truth-telling. Telling the truth about Christ, using the Holy Spirit as it reanimates us and breathes into us new life and energy to tell the world about Jesus. In these last days, we will see wonders. Looking around us, it can be hard to see these wonders, but they're abundant. Surely the wonders and goodness of God are present in spirit-led acts of love and mercy. Just think of the large crowd that turned out for the gun violence awareness walk, of the volunteers reading at elementary schools, of the bunny boxes, or any of the numerous outreach programs that Trinity does. Are these not wonders? Are these not endeavors that reanimate us for global mission, for loving and serving our neighbors? Are these not acts of holy prophecy, of telling the world about the good news that we have in Jesus? Young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. Dreams and visions, not of what life currently is, but of what life can be. Not empty dreams and false visions, but dreams of what can make our world into a more equitable place. A world where migrants aren't dying in the desert, but are instead welcomed to the table. A world where we send our prayers to heaven, and not our prayers and our murdered children. Dreams give us strength, they can be a rallying cry. Think of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech a modern-day prophet telling us of a world that is reconciled, healed, and reanimated. These are visions of a world, a world that we can have, and a world that we are continually creating. This is a global mission. This is our global mission. And thank God that we don't have to do this on our own. Humanitarian aid is never a crime. It's hard to think that when using legal loopholes to avoid criminal charges when it's 10 in the morning, 110 degrees, and you're hiking with two gallons of water. But the Holy Spirit was alive in that desert, as alive and as vibrant as she is here. Even in the least likely places, we are reanimated for global mission. We are enlivened for God's work to do God's work. We can be bold to say that God is with us, alongside us for our journey through life, breathing into us a new life daily. And that, my friends, is good news. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our hymn.
United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all who long for you. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially Pat and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Resurrected God, Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and throughout the outreach ministries of our synod and community. Resurrected God, life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you, especially Harriet Betty Maycomer, Ian A. McCoy, Sally Burke, and Dan Beardsley. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service, comfort all who mourn, and usher in a world where war is no more. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. When you're finished sharing the piece, I invite you to uh, please be seated. Give me the... <laughs> Thank you. I hope that when you came in, if you, did, uh, you picked up one of our Trinity Weeklies. If you did not, I encourage you to, to make sure you get one before you leave today. And if you look through it, you will see that there are so many activities going on here at, at Trinity, from vacation Bible school, choir camp, and, and so many things that are going on, even this summer when things tend to slow down things. And of course, I just want to share with you that we could not do that without the support and without the encouragement and from each of you. And so we are, we are so blessed to be together as, as a church. If, uh, if any of you would like to make a gift to Trinity this day as you come up for communion a little bit later, why we have baskets on each side of the altar here and you're welcome to place the, your, your uh, offering or gifts in those baskets. Now let us continue. Lost men say I am found in him. Oh, and let the river flow. But the blind men say 
say I can see again But the dead men say I am born again Oh, and let the river flow offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour, out, pour us out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. And as always, we will have four communion stations, one at each of the transepts and two here at the, head of the, at the head of the aisle. We do distribute communion by intinction, meaning that as you come forward, please have your hand out with your palm up and uh, we will place a, a wafer in the palm of your hand and then you'll move to the side to uh, dip it into, into the wine. There are <coughs> bowls on each side of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, steps up here. Uh, or after you have a cup, uh, you can use them to place that in there. As always, we will have for you at the ta front table here, on each side here, and on each of the transepts, we will have uh, um, bowl, um, glasses of uh, non-alcoholic grape juice, if you prefer, and we also have gluten-free gluten -free wafers. 
Please know that, uh, as always, we, we share with you that, uh, remind you that this indeed is God's table. It's not the Lutheran table or the, the bishop's table. It is God's table. So please know that all who are present this morning are welcome to come forward and, uh, and receive the sacrament. Now, I invite you to please stand as we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our, our praise and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting one, pe one, body, pe one body of people of every nation and every tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and their creatures and with archangels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. <laughs> night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new, cup blood, the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. Thanks be to God. I invite the assembly to please be seated as, and as our... Uh, Community assistants make their way forward. We will continue with our Lamb of God.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name. As always, we thank you so much for joining us this morning uh, for worship on this uh, very special Pentecost Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. Uh, certainly, all of our veteran families and, and those who have served with, uh, for our country, for, uh, for each of us and things. Just a couple of things I'd like to bring to your attention from, from this week, uh, w weekly. First of all, remember that next Sunday, next Sunday, the 5th, uh, 4th of June, we will be starting our Trinity Alive service. It will take place over here in the chapel. It's a half hour, 30 minute service with communion uh, for those families who are, who with young children or find it difficult for one reason or another to sit, have a whole hour long service. Next Sunday, that will start at 940, immediately following this service. This service will continue uh, as, as always, but that will start next Sunday. Again, I remind you that uh, our Pixel program continues. You can, sign, you can uh, purchase a Pixel out in our lobby today or any Sunday. Uh, we're heading, hoping to head toward, uh, toward completion of that this summer sometime so that we can get our, our LED uh, screens up and, and enhancing our worship for, uh, for, everyone, for everyone to experience. There is a notice in your bulletin and your weekly about a Thrivent breakfast also next Sunday. Uh, I really encourage you to come out. If you'd like to make reservations for that breakfast, you just, just call the church and let us know. Uh, I have been to many of these uh, Thrive In breakfasts. I encourage you to come. It's well, well worth, worth your time to, uh, to see this, okay? To be a part of, of that. And finally, I'd like to uh, call your attention to the fact that last Sunday, uh, you, as you were uh, we had a, a, a walk through Lansdale for those uh, to bring awareness to, uh, to all that's going on within our country around the, the violence be with guns and so on. Uh, and part of the purpose of that was to, to encourage people to send letters to their federal and state representatives. If you would like to be part of that, if you would like to sign letters encouraging the passage of bills to encourage laws to to, uh, to uh, uh, prohibit and to limit the purchase of guns and so on. Uh, we encourage you. Those letters are available to, for you to sign out here in the lobby. Barbara and Joe Devlin will be there to, uh, to assist you with that. And they also have some handouts there uh, giving you some, some information about, about gun violence that goes on in our country. With that, I encourage you to, to please stand for, your, for our final blessing. People of God, the God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Our sending him, this is my song.
filled with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. 